ALW. The first subassembly is the pumping unit. These are self-priming diaphragm micro pumps. There are two of them, one for each solvent. They deliver solvent at a constant flow rate directly to the retention tubing and the needle of the syringe. They can be mounted on the extreme left side of the PAL so they do not take up any of the precious rail space. Support tubing connects the output ports of each pump to the injection head. Next, this is the newly designed wash station, which is passive, which means there is no independent solvent supply. I'm going to use a pointer here. Wash station one, wash station two are quite similar to the um, fast wash on the conventional PAL with the exception that the solvent is coming from the pumps through the syringe needle. Both the outside and the inside of the needle are washed by this flow. These two front ports come from the waste line of the valve itself, the waste port on the valve. An overflow from the syringe wash and, and these waste ports goes directly into a common drain. This shows how the waste port of a conventional six-port injection valve is connected to the front of the wash station. No adaptation of the valve is necessary, and all the standard CTC injection valve types are supported. Of course, a critical part of this assembly, uh, this, uh, this uh, device, is the syringe assembly. It's been completely re redesigned with the following features. These are two ports which connect to the solvent pumps, solvent one and solvent two. This is the solvent selection valve. It's a solenoid valve which opens one or other of these two ports or closes them both. It's actuated using electronics in the injection head, so there's no external elect electrical wiring required. If you look closely under this metal piece is the um, retention tubing. This isolates the syringe, sorry, the needle, which is a removable needle, from the glass barrel of the syringe and is primed at all times. And we'll see an animation of how this works in a few minutes. The retention tubing volume is uh, just slightly larger than the volume of the syringe, so that the sample never enters the syringe, or, nor does it make contact with the solenoids. Lastly, um, at this end, just above the removable needle, we see the spring-loaded needle guide assembly. On the PAL, it looks like this. You see on the left the support tubing uh, for the um, solvent lines coming in at the side. And the connection of the solenoids goes through the back of this syringe adapter to the electronics of the injection head. A key design feature is that the two wash solvents are plumbed directly to the injection head right at the point where the, um, where the, uh, re the uh, retention loop is located. This means that there's a very low dead volume when switching from one solvent to the other. And under program control, they, it flushes both the retention tubing and the valve inlet. There is uh, no better way to show liquid handling than through a, a dynamic uh, schematic, and that's what we are going to do now. You see on the screen, 
uh, the syringe, which is sitting on top of what we refer to as the retention tubing, which connects to the needle. And you see coming in from the left side, from the pumps, a solvent one and two. And you see the uh, solenoid valve that can switch the solvents. The, on the bottom on the left, you see the wash station, which are basically what we call fountain type of wash station, which are, like Peter already said, passive. Sample vials are to your right. So uh, we'll step through this cycle so that you can see what in each individual step is. First step, syringe goes up, pulls an air gap. Second step, we go into the sample vial and pick up the appropriate amount or the programmed amount of sample. And as you can see, the sample is totally buffered by the air gap and by solvent number one from the syringe. As we come out of the sample container, uh, we pull a second air gap. We'll go dip the needle, which basically wettens and cleans in a passive way the outside of the needle in wash one. We'll go to the valve and first push out the first portion of the sample through the inlet towards the waste. The valve switches to the load position and sample is pushed onto the loop. The valve turns into the inject position and the sample is now going to be pushed by the gradient pump towards the column. The needle has not retracted out of the valve yet. Next step is solvent number one pushes out the rest of the sample to its waste. We use uh, solvent number two to flush first, which might be an organic in, in, in some cases. Then we go and wash the needle inside and out in wash two. We go back to the valve, wash the inlet and the, the groove that goes to waste with solvent number one. And do the same for the needle. And that completes the wash cycle. I'm going to repeat this one more time because there's a lot to be watched. Also, uh, consider the time it takes on the upper left uh, hand uh, of, of the slide and how it progresses. So I'm just going to let you watch it without making any comments and step through uh, very slowly.